Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to Cambodia. In this video, we'll visit Siem Reap and the magnificent temples of Angkor Wat. We'll talk to locals and foreigners about what's it like living here. The American dream is not for me. I don't want to live in America. And why you shouldn't always trust tuk-tuk drivers. Siem Reap is located in the northwest of the country. It's the second largest city in Cambodia, with a population of 245,000 people. There's an international airport, nice, modern, and built in the traditional Khmer style. So they greeted me from the airport, and this is our transportation. A lot of hotels will send a tuk-tuk to pick you up. So nice of them. They call it the gem of Cambodia, as it is the closest city to the temples of Angkor Wat, the country's top attraction. Let's start with the temples. The best way to get around temples is to hire a tuk-tuk for a whole day. There's gonna be 25 bucks and, you know, pretty affordable. They'll take you places, you can go anywhere. Now, if you wanna visit the most famous temple, Angkor Wat, it's gonna be a 30 minute ride. It's the largest religious monument in the world measuring 162 hectares or 402 acres. These temples were built under the Khmer Empire. That's what they used to call Cambodia back then. Khmer Empire was founded in 802 AD and then flourished for over 600 years. Originally Angkor Wat was constructed as a Hindu temple. At that time most of the temples were built to honor Hindu gods as Buddhism had not yet been established. The towers represent Mount Meru, the center of the world in Hindu mythology. It's surrounded by water. Then towards the end of the 12th century it was transformed into a Buddhist temple. The height is 65 meters and no building in Siem Reap can be taller than that. <laughs> Let's visit another temple. Bayon Temple is situated within Angkor Thom, which was the last and the most enduring capital city of the Khmer Empire. It was established by King Jayavarman VII, an energetic king who ruled in the late 12th century, and it covers an area of nine square kilometers. It's famous for its 216 stone-carved faces on the temple's towers. There are so many ruins and countless sandstone relief carvings to explore. Tap Ram Temple. It's also a 12th century temple built under the, the reign of the same Jayavarman VII. Now today it's been nicknamed Tomb Raider Temple or Angelina Jolie Temple because it was depicted in 2001 movie Lara Croft Tomb Raider. So, let's go take a look. It was a Buddhist monastery and a center of learning dedicated to Jayavarman the Seventh Mother. Okay, we made a quick stop for, for some drinks, for some fresh, um, you know, cold water. Along the roads, you'll see a lot of these markets that sell coconuts, water, and uh, I just want to know what it's, what's it like running the business here. So let's ask these ladies, what's it like? Now it's difficult, not like before. When we have COVID-19 already, after we lost 80% money that we earn every month. No Chinese. Chinese not yet come. Oh, okay, yeah. in Chinese. Yes, before we business with the Chinese, like many Chinese come, okay. and Chinese like drink coconut and shopping. Yeah. What time do you start work in the morning? Seven. Seven, Seven or eight. What time do you finish? Five. Seven to five. Yeah. How many days per week? Every day for like seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah. For a hundred, maybe a hundred dollars profit after yeah. everything's paid for. Yeah. As you can tell, it's not easy running a business like this, but at the same time, they're also facing a lot of challenges. And that is this area, the land they're sitting on is being redesignated for different purposes and they're being forced to move. And Al will tell you more about it. Yeah, so more than 10,000 families that have been living here for many, many years uh, are now forced to move off their land and to a nearby property called Runta Ek. Here they could make a little bit of money from tourists. Now they'll have no tourists there and no means of an income. So it's a massive question mark to find out where they're going to be in a few years. Wow. How old is the baby? Six, six, six months. Six months, okay. Yeah, six months. Let's visit another temple. Priya Khan Temple was also built by King Jayavarman VII but this time to honor his father. It's one of the lesser known temples. It has been left largely unrestored with numerous trees and other vegetation growing among the ruins. In front of many temples, you'll see rows of these statues and they represent on one side a row of gods and on the other side, a row of demons. 
and the costly battle in, and it's called a tug of war between them. You know, how do you know who's the demon, who's the god? It's uh, the happier, happy faces are the gods, the unhappy faces are the demons. Next is Pre-Rap Temple, and my friend Al is going to introduce it. Hello, welcome to Pre-Rap Temple. This temple was made in 961 and 962. It is a Hindu temple, and they believe that it was used for uh, cremation, so it was a funeral place. They used three different ty types of stones. We have sandstone, we have bricks, and then we'll show you later, uh, made from laterite. And laterite is like iron, you said. Yeah, very porous, but a very strong stone. It's difficult to make it look pretty because it has so many holes in it. That's why they use the sandstone, because it's easy to make it look pretty. Yeah. Nick Peen Temple. It's a tiny temple built, again, by King Jayavarman VII. It's a small temple sitting on an island of a huge water reservoir, and it probably represents Anavatapta, a mythical lake in the Himalayas, whose waters are thought to cure all illnesses. It's like an adventure, you know, going from one place to another. I can, I can call it temple hopping. Almost overwhelming with information, but it's just so interesting. And the last temple we're gonna take a look at is Tane. It's yet another temple built by who? Yes, Jayavarman VII, of course. One of the greatest kings of Cambodia. He defeated a few of the neighboring enemies and he also put a lot of effort into construction and building these magnificent buildings. This temple is one of the most remote ones. One of the reasons to visit it is that you might get lucky to see pileated gibbons. I wasn't lucky though. I'll tell you what, going from temple to temple is just so not easy. I'm so exhausted right now and it's the second day that I've been doing this. The number of temples in the area is just mind-boggling. A temple's pass for three days is around $60. All right, back to CM Reap. Today, it's a modern tourist town. CM Reap welcomed 2.2 million international visitors in 2019. There is a good choice of hostels and hotels. This is the one I was staying at, Golden Temple Villa. Let me tell you, the service was probably the best one I've seen in my life. The staff would always greet me with a smile and call me by my name. And if I went to the pool, they'd always bring a drink right away. And that's at a $60 a night hotel, including fantastic breakfast. Pretty awesome. CM Reap has a lot of beautiful architecture. Around the old market, you find a lot of French colonial and Chinese style architecture. And there's so many photogenic places, like look at these two buildings. There's a lot of cool narrow streets to explore on foot. Is there much to do besides the temples? CM Reap has a pub street with bars and discos, but nothing as crazy as in some Thai cities. During the middle of the day, to avoid the heat, you might want to visit the Angkor National Museum. It has a comprehensive collection of different items related to the history of the country, the culture, and also the most famous temples of the Angkor Wat. It's a modern museum with exhibits covering the history of the Khmer Empire. You'll see impressive galleries like Gallery of a Thousand Buddhas and much more. In the evening, you can visit one of the city's Apsara dance performances that comes with the dinner. I loved it. Traditional dancing and fighting, good music and good food. Pretty awesome. Let's give it a watch. Fried noodles with eggs? Beef and egg. Beef and egg, okay. So is that comfortable sitting on small chairs? You get used to it. <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> it takes a while, but you get used to it. What did you order? Um, fried katang beef with egg. So some noodles, beef and egg. Okay, is that one of your favorites? Um, I don't think I've had it. I just, yeah. 
picked cool. it. <laughs> awesome. Where do you come from? Australia, Melbourne. Uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. All right. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Thank you. The night market is huge and it offers anything from seafood to skewers, tons and tests and skin, insects, you name it. What kind of bird is that? I think it's a sparrow. I'm a little hungry, so let's get some street food. And this is what I got. Yeah. Pork ribs. Everybody's sitting on these tiny chairs. Yeah. Why do they use them? Because uh, they're small to be able to set up and take down. If you want to try something unusual, you can try silkworms or some grasshoppers. How about that? How much did that cost you? All the fruit? For this one, uh, 13 dollars. 13 dollars. Okay. If you want to do some shopping, there's a Riverside night market. This is where I bought a couple of cool t-shirts. And of course, as in most Southeast Asian cities, there are numerous massage parlors all over the place. And a full massage and a five dollar one hour. Okay. And a 30 minutes and a three dollars. Okay. Oh, just three dollars for 30 minutes? Yes, 30 minutes. Okay, so it's really affordable. <laughs> Am I in your way? Am I annoying you? Of course you are. <laughs> Just arrived. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, the fourth, fifth time, but it's been a long time. So I'm looking for a nice cozy place to hang out a few hours with Wi-Fi and a beer that's not too hot. Most places are not air conditioned this time of day. Yeah, that's what you're looking for, an air conditioned place. What am I gonna do? That, but the Greek place looks inviting again. Anyway. Oh, maybe I'll just sit here. Let's jump in the, the pool. What a great with idea. The fishes. You, hey, would you mind moving over that way? Or you fish that end. Right. I'm oh, sorry, it's the wrong language I'm speaking. Uh, All right, you right. guys, you guys have a good day. Make sure you get out of the city because the countryside is gorgeous. Rice paddies, lotus farms, and fishing villages. Tony Sap Lake is just 30 minutes away from Siem Reap. It is Southeast Asia's largest freshwater lake. On the Tony Sap Lake, you have roughly a million families that are living in floating houses um, out on the lake. And this village that we're seeing, these houses here, um, I'm not sure why they're not in the open water, but in the wet season, this all floods. Everything you see here floods. It's sort of like water world. Everything exists in the water, they get food, from the water, they pee, they poop, they wash their clothes, they brush their teeth, everything revolves the water, okay. so. You can visit one of the floating villages and see how the local people <laughs> go in about their daily lives. Okay, can you guys guess what that is? So guys, kind of been missing Europe, so we are in Venice right now. And it's, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's uh, houses standing on this water, it's like a canal. They try to make, they try to decorate the houses, I love that. A lot of people put flowers on top, and, uh, and, it, and it seems like a pretty friendly community. That, that's my impression. People look puzzled. They're like, what are those Farangs doing in this village? This is not a typical place to come. I think once he gets up here, he might turn the engine on and we might go out to see the floating village. Now it's time for karaoke, I guess. This man seems to be having a blast in his hammock. I love the entrepreneurial spirit of locals. Hello, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Cambodian Siem Reap and Cowboy Bar and Feed. So, hello, anybody. Yeah, I'm Soka. 
Uh, for me, I always wear a cap, like cowboy, yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> but uh, my place is like a cowboy from Cambodia, not cowboy from Texas. Right. <laughs> that is a gun, like uh, I took from my farm. Wow. But that's not real right now. I right. take something out because in Cambodia, not legal, not 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 legal. Uh, have it's just illegal, you know. Yeah. But I'm look like drunk. <laughs> I'm all drunk on the horse. I don't know where they're going, but my horse is nowhere. <laughs> is that in Cambodia? Yeah, yeah, it's Cambodia. Oh, okay. It's a farm of mine, like three hours from here. I'm driving okay, a bike. Okay. Yeah. This is a cowboy. Like, uh, they are eating. Yeah, <laughs> With a uh, big chicken. <laughs> Meet Soka, who went from being a tuk tuk driver making $700 a month to opening a cowboy bar. Sounds too good to be true? Well, to be perfectly honest, he met a Scottish guy who he became friends with and who became an investor in his project. So having great communication skills and a good idea goes a long way. Let's see how foreigners live in Siem Reap. Our friend Al, who's an American, has lived here for 10 years now. Yeah, so this is my house. Bedroom. Yeah, a lot of shoes. Wardrobe. And the bathroom. It's like a mobile home, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's RVs that are definitely bigger than, than our house. <laughs> um, yeah, so outside, this was nothing. This was uh, kind of like what you see next door. And we filled, put the fence in, filled it with 25 truckloads of dirt. And then my wife just went to town planting everything. These are coconut trees, seven mango trees, avocado tree, kefir lime tree, now that I work from home, I'm home all day. Yeah. So it used to be nice to go to work and then come home, sit outside, have a couple beers after work, have a little fire, just kind of stare into the fire. Now you're just working from home like the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it feels so good, guys. This is a super hot day. This flower is actually called hibiscus, so you can make tea with it. These are Angkor Wat chilies. And they, they're native only to here in Cambodia. Ta in Khmer means old man, because he, he's he got these kind of whiskers here and here, and he just looks like an old man. An old dog. Can you shake? Good boy. Wow, you can open it. <laughs> yeah, so now we have breeze coming through pretty much all directions. Looks like a shipping container. Right. So this is life inside the box. <laughs> so how long have you lived in Cambodia? I've been here for about 10 years now. Yeah, initially moved here. Uh, I was living in Jackson, Wyoming in the United States and uh, was a photographer wanting to go more professional with it and I traveled here to Southeast Asia in 2007, so I had a familiarity with Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and Cambodia. And I just wrote a letter that just said, the American dream is not for me. I don't want to live in America. I want to be in Asia somewhere doing something with photography. And sent it to any tour company in Vietnam and Cambodia. An English guy wrote back to me here in Siem Reap. He had been living here already for 10 years. Peace of Angkor Tours. And uh, he said, I'm going to retire, come pretty soon, so why don't you move here? I'll show you what to do, and you can pretty much take my company over. So I bought a one-way ticket. I sold everything in my life and uh, came here knowing one person. And uh, yeah, for eight, nine years, I ran photo tours, bringing people to the temples, teaching them how to, how to use their own camera can probably say there's not many Western people that have seen the sunrise at Angkor Wat more than, maybe more than me. It's, it's in the hundreds of times. It, it has to wow. be in hundreds of times. And then, uh, yeah, found a, found a woman and uh, kind of settled down from there. We bought this land four years ago and started building on it about three years ago. Started a YouTube channel, Life Inside the Box kind of showing the process of what it's like to build a shipping container house here. Everyone thinks we're crazy because they think it's going to be really, really hot. But as long as you use insulation and kind of do it 
properly. It's it's a fairly affordable way to build uh, housing here. How expensive is it to live here? An average single person living here, I think, if you're making around a thousand dollars a month, that's a fairly decent income. You'll have rent probably hundred fifty dollars a month. Uh, probably low. Yeah, probably won't be air conditioned or anything super fancy. Probably just a small flat. My first apartment was 50 bucks a month. Oh, wow. But it was a small, like, very, very small space, just okay. enough room for my bed. And if you're living on your own, it's more convenient, it's cheaper, and just easier to eat out. If, you're, if you eat local food, uh, fried noodles, fried rice, things like that, you're looking at around 75 cents to a dollar a meal. Wow. So it's pretty cheap. If you go up to about 2000 to $3,000 a month, uh, you're living pretty decent, eating a lot of Western food, drinking quite a bit, and then around five grand, you're living like a king. Um, king. What are the opportunities here, if, for, 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 say, for a Westerner? A lot of people work online. If you can make a Western income and yeah. still live, live here, yeah, you're doing, pretty you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, teaching English in an international school, um, you're probably going to make around a thousand dollars to maybe fifteen hundred maximum. Otherwise, open a restaurant, maybe a guest house. But you have to find something that's different and unique. Yeah. Um, that's that's the big thing because right now, if you want to open a bar on Suksan, Suksan is a, a main kind of drinking road. Good luck because the whole entire street is nothing but bars. Let's go get some food. Finally, we are at the restaurant. How's everybody doing? Oh, drink beer. Kampuchia, <laughs> Kampucha. Yeah, so this is the uh, Ban Chao restaurant. So it's kind of this real thin kind of liquid. Let's take a look. Wow. It's almost like a crate. Uh, Happy chef. Now it's broken, so now it works with the barbecue. Yeah. Fresh basil, and I just like to take. Welcome, when you're done. Rip off a piece of the taco bit. Put this in here. And we take some of the leaves. Cucumber, and you fold it up, kind of like a taco. You dip it in the sauce. It's not heavy, it's really light, so you can eat a lot. What do you do for fun with an American? Play golf, of course. Well, mini golf in this case. Most of the 14 holes are designed as Angkor temples. Hello, welcome to Angkor Wat Put, the little tropical paradise here in the countryside at Triu. Uh, this place has been here for about seven years. Uh, Mr. T is the owner with his lovely wife and two kids. Uh, it's a great family place. Uh, they do have a little bit of food if you're hungry. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Come on and join us. If you need transportation, you can hail someone on the street. There are literally hundreds of tuk-tuk drivers all over town. There are two apps that are similar to Uber, Grab and Pass app. Be friendly to everybody, but at the same time, don't let yourself be scammed. Okay, I took a tuk-tuk to Al's house, and I think we got lost somewhere in the countryside. You know, on the bright side, it's beautiful. One time I got a tuk-tuk to take me to Al's place, which is a little bit out of town. Well, the tuk-tuk driver said he knows where it is, but he ended up taking me through the bumpy country roads among water buffaloes with no clear understanding where we're going. Instead of a 15-minute ride, it turned into a 40-minute ride full of adventures like getting stuck in the mud, where I literally had to push him so we could proceed. Let's do it.
And then this guy had the audacity to demand $20 for the trip when it was supposed to be about $4. Off the beaten path, you can visit Sokka Museum. This year, uh, I'm owner in Vietnamese Sokka Museum in Simri, Cambodia. It is undoubtedly a great entertaining museum, especially if you're lucky enough to have Mr. Lee show you around. This is a Volkswagen Beetle from 1958. He's got collections of old cameras, bikes, phones from all over the world. He's been doing it since 1998, and the museum opened in 2020 without any support from others. He said the locals gave him a nickname, Crazy Grandpa. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, Thank you so much to visit in Cambodia. Yeah. It is important to remember the past and learn from the past, and you can visit one of the museums of landmines in the area. Yeah. Cambodia has a major problem with landmines, especially in rural areas. This is the legacy of three decades of war, which has taken a severe toll on the Cambodians. The country has some 40,000 amputees, which is one of the highest rates in the world. You will see victims of landmines forming groups and singing songs in many places. Okay. Wow. There might be as many as four to six million mines and other pieces of unexploded ordnance. Cambodia has been through a lot, and you'll see bullet holes even in Angkor Wat Temple. This is from the times of Khmer Rouge communists fighting Vietnamese troops. Let's see what the locals have to say about the times of the Khmer Rouge. I was wondering if your family or some of your loved ones were affected by Khmer Rouge. During the time, like many people died because of uh, um, the lead of the Khmer Rouge. They, they, always, they, they have to kill the people who have education, have good education, yeah. they will kill at all. Like, you wear the glasses, example, yeah, you wear the glasses, yeah. they will shot you or teachers or the yes. daughters, and then they will killing you in a minute. Yeah, they kill them. Yeah, rescue, you and then, yeah, and then easy for them for controlling. Yes. Like, they, they take one guy, they have uh, uh, no education, they will let him control one group of the people, it's the people inside of the group make something wrong, a mistake. Yeah. Even, even some of the people, they're like a family of the guy, the, the leaders of the group. This, he's still killed. Yeah. yeah, he's still killed, shoot, whatever. He, they, he doesn't care about a parent or aunt or brother or sister, you know? Right. It's just listen to one guy. It's the leaders of the Camaro. Very bad time of the oh, Camaro. Absolutely, absolutely. And otherwise, economics, zero. Other things, zero. Yeah. Nothing. Right. And now we have a better, we good, but still, yeah, we can say it's good, but still something's bad as well, because, yeah, yeah for the leaders, same, same. Yeah, I don't right. want to talk more about this thing. Yeah, before you get arrested, <laughs> you can't talk it's, about yeah, it. I just, I just so like something. Yeah. This bar needs yeah. to stay in business, OK? <laughs> What are some of the challenges of living here? It's not an easy place to live for the average person because things like air conditioning, health, sanitation, and shopping and, and things like something simple that I would want. I could just go to a hardware store in America at Home Depot and find 20 different of those things. Here, it's you really have to search. I would say that's probably one of the most difficult. It's just, I would say, convenience. Convenience okay. is a challenge. But once you kind of get past that, and deal with the heat, which is really hot here. The people are extremely friendly. Things are really cheap. Uh, usually things don't go your way. So you have to kind of wrap your mind mentality around things might not go my way today. Right. And you know, instead of being angry and being pissed off at it, you just kind of have to say, well, that's Cambodia and that's, that's kind of the way exactly. it is. Exactly, that's the way they do it. Yeah. I've been here for about 10 years now. Love it so far? Uh, it's a love-hate relationship. The first few years were awesome, when everything was adventure and new and crazy. But after a while, I miss having rules and laws and I guess some, some laws and some <laughs> rules are good, not all. This is a 
partially developed baby duck. You can see some of the feathers are starting wow. to form. And, uh, yeah, they like to eat them as a snack. Turns into a meal, okay? Not good. Some lime, some salt and pepper. Chili garlic sauce. Siem Reap is growing fast. There's a brand new aquarium some 25 kilometers away from the city, Ancor Wildlife and Aquarium. It opened in 2022 and it features a 500 cubic meters freshwater aquarium as well as a 600 cubic meter saltwater aquarium and 10 hectares of outdoor animal exhibits including tigers, river otters, crocodiles and much more. While tourism is on the rise, it still hasn't fully recovered from the pre-COVID times. It's not easy right now, like yeah. me stand by almost around 8 o'clock in the morning until now just only get two US dollar right wow. now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's now less tourists, uh, less uh, the tuk-tuk driver a little bit, but maybe around evening, around start from five or six, and there's a lot of tuk-tuk stand by on the street, and they are say hello sir tuk-tuk, hello sir tuk-tuk anywhere. <laughs> Some tourists they said, oh I'm so boring because so many times they ask about hello sir tuk-tuk, hello sir tuk-tuk, something like that. So there you have it, CM Reap, the gem of Cambodia. Thanks for watching guys, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and let me know what you think about Cambodia in the comments. Welcome to Cambodia, thank you for making our video. So I think a lot of people come to travel into my country and I'm a Champai, I have to sell like the street food and another river. So you will to come to my place. So I think you know me, yay, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>